The 18th century was a time of many drastic changes that greatly impacted the subjects and depictions within the art of the time. From the loss of kings to the discoveries of new innovations, every decade or so a new ideal and focus was introduced into the art world. For many years, a popular subject amongst many artists was religion and idealized depictions of biblical moments and characters. Eventually, the art world evolved into including landscapes and ornamentation, but for centuries there was a sort of unwritten rule for artists to depict mainly leaders of their grandeur desires, or simply topics involving religion. One of the first noticeable shifts in focus in the art world was during the Baroque period. The Baroque style depicted grandeur, wealth, and drama unlike many of its predecessors. Even still, the Baroque period continued to attempt making the Catholic ideology appear to the masses, as many subjects of the style still pertain to religion. Although many styles through the centuries had departed slightly from religion, the true, although brief, departure began in the Rococo period, which focused on little beyond wealth, comfort, youth, and playfulness. Following the death of Louis XIV, French society, and in turn their art, moved away from a focus on the monarchy to the aristocracy. Furthermore, the onset of the Rococo period marked the cultural shift from Rome to Paris as the fashion, culture, and wealth capital. Instead of depicting the power of the church and Catholic ideology, the Rococo style chose to depict the class, elegancy, grandeur, and carefree life of French aristocrats. Whereas throughout time, art has often depicted idealized versions of reality, the Rococo period chose to depict life as it was, or realistically could be. The Rococo period was one of honesty, and where life was depicted as it truly was, at least for wealthier aristocrats who could live life carefree and in grandeur, and in turn created a culture that emitted luxury and extravagance. Although Rococo artworks are certainly grand and emit wealth, as Remy G. Saisland states, the happiness drawn by this generation was a princely happiness. It was also one of the skeptics and the epistarians, and founded upon the possible, rather than upon dreams and expectations, and possible realization or fulfillment. Saisland further represents the realist carefree style in stating, Happiness in their mind is ever constructed with a profound knowledge of human nature. It was a generation with few illusions. Among the hundreds of paintings that portray the ideals of the Rococo period, Jean Honore Fragonard's The Meeting from the Loves of the Shepherds and Louis Perrat Alcazar's Charles III Dining Before the Court are two paintings that beautifully depict the grand and carefree lives of the wealthier aristocracy. Jean Honore Fragonard was a colorist born in 1732 who has been praised for his exploration into different tools and art, as well as in his imaginative, beautiful depictions of the Rococo ideals. The meeting was commissioned by King Louis XV's mistress, Madame du Barry, who wanted paintings that depicted the different stages of love. Although Madame du Barry later rejected this painting as well as its counterparts, it remains a popular painting that beautifully resembles the playful, carefree aristocratic youth that lived during the Rococo period. In the meeting, Fragonard depicts a secret meeting between two young lovers. The young man has just scaled the wall surrounding the gardens in which his lover anxiously awaits, looking around the gardens to ensure no one will see them. Although the alert manner of the two characters is evident, the composition of the painting places the lovers in the direct view of the goddess of love, Venus, as well as her companion, Cupid. While the young lovers are clearly anxious to be caught or found, the meeting itself, as well as the placement of the couple in front of the figures of love, depicts the romantic feeling so common in Rococo artworks. The composition of the painting also places the lovers and Venus in a sort of triangle, so that our eyes fall on the lovers and then onto the watching Venus and Cupid. The artwork further depicts ideals of the time as although the two are clearly alert and anxious, their decision to even meet at all depicts the naive, blissful, and carefree life many people lived in that time. Much of the painting is done in light, airy pastel colors that support the loving, sensual nature of the scene. Furthermore, the white and red used in the clothing of the young lovers depicts innocence and passion, two more common factors of the Rococo period. While the young woman sits in innocence and anxiety, her lover brings passion and bravery meant to nurture their love. The colors of the flowers surrounding the lovers is also quite important, as the lavender color represents elegance and grace, and the pink represents youth and freedom. Another important element of the painting is the light, as the two lovers are simply shrouded in light in order to reflect the purity and excitement of their love, as well as to draw in the viewer's eyes. The lines of the painting, specifically of the nature surrounding the lovers, contributes to the feeling of the painting as the flowing lines of the curved foliage serve as a reminder of the light purpose of the meeting. Fragonard's painting is a perfect representation of Rococo ideals and how the style dramatically took the focus of art away from religion and idealization and placed it instead onto the idea of indulgence and frivolity. Although a smaller figure within the Rococo artist repertoire, Louis Perret Alcazar is often recognized as the greatest Spanish presenter of Rococo ideals. In his painting, Charles III Dining Before the Court, 
Red depicts King Charles III sitting at a table surrounded by his court and other various visitors of high society. The immaculate detail and wealth exuded from the painting represents the extravagance of the time and the indulgence of fortunate some were able to experience throughout the Rococo period. Although the painting does depict a monarch, it still represents the luxury of various members of high society and the carefree life they tended to live. While the colors may seem to blend together at first glance, the striking golds and pops of red serve to resemble the extravagant nature of the meeting, as well as serving to draw the viewer's eyes to the lavish artwork surrounding the king. The paintings surrounding King Charles III and his court specifically are The Sacrifice of Iphigenia, Mercury and Hearse, Diana with a Hunting Dog, and Venus in Vulcan's Forge, and each represent the carefree indulgence and extravagance of the period. The lines of this painting are another crucial element, as the towering frames of the dramatic paintings once more represent the atmosphere of wealth. Furthermore, the soft lines of the figures in the paintings surround the court contribute to the overall feeling of the painting. The composition of the artwork is a strange factor to consider, as many tend to wonder why exactly the foreground and center of the painting are bare, as this is often where the subject lies. The answer, though, comes in that Perret likely did not want us to focus purely on the figures of the painting, but rather the frivility and lavishness of their surroundings. By utilizing dramatic, detailed artwork that is not truly being appreciated by the figures within the painting, and including striking colors such as gold and red, Perret represents the carefree nature of the people living in the Rococo period, as well as the lavish lives many lived. The shadow and light of the artwork is also quite important as the shadows on many of the figures take our eyes away from them and place them upon the light-filled artworks instead. Through the opulent, luxurious depictions within the meeting and Charles III dining before the court, it is clear where the priorities and ideals of the Rococo period lied. While previous art and cultural periods focused on religion and idealized moments and people, these paintings represent that the Rococo period instead cared for reality, or at least the extravagant version aristocratic people lived. Through soft lines, striking color, and naive, carefree figures, both Fragonard and Perret perfectly depict the lavish nature of the Rococo period and how it forever changed the art world.